Hey everyone, Matt here from Punch Greens Golf. Do you want to make shot tracers like this? If so, definitely stay tuned. What I'm going to do is take you through how I make my shot tracers completely free using DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty easy to do. Keep it short and just try to show you how to do it, where to download the software, how to actually do it once the software is installed, and a couple filming techniques at the end of the video to help you film the best possible golf shot so when you go to edit the shot tracer together um, it makes it a lot easier to do so i'll show you um, all of that i'll have everything bookmarked below so you can skip around to the relevant section for you and come back to this video many times if you want to you know refresh on how to do the shot tracer so hit that like button hit that subscribe button and let's jump right into it okay so this is where you want to go um, i will put the link in the description of how to get to this website it's professional video editing software and, but the free version that I use um, is right here. So you can buy one, it's $300. I wouldn't recommend doing that right now. So all you need to do is come right over to this section, DaVinci Resolve, free download now. Select DaVinci Resolve 18 if you're on Windows or Mac. So I'm on Windows, you'll click this and you do, you do need to fill in your information in order to download it. Um, but once you do that, they will you know, you'll have the download and you can just go ahead and install that right away. All right, so let's jump right in. Um, it's actually pretty easy to do. And as you do it more and more, you'll get better at it. At least that's been in my experience. Um, make sure you watch the part about prerequisites needed for filming to make sure you set up the uh, filming angles correctly. As you can see here, I actually didn't put the camera directly behind me perfectly straight so that's going to affect things a little bit but it should be okay I've already done a shot trace around this one so I'm doing it again just to show you how to do it so first you want to obviously bring your clip into DaVinci Resolve and I'll link um, I'm not going to give a full DaVinci Resolve tutorial I'm still learning it myself so I'll link to this other channel um, that's actually really really helpful and it's probably one of the best channels I've seen about learning this program um, and I really like it. I go there a lot to figure out how to do things. So here we are on the edit page. Here's my clip. We'll just play it through. This is me shooting. And yeah, there we go. <laughs> Went a little bit right, but you get the point. So once you bring it in, you actually are going to want to optimize your media. So you, if you have a better computer, you may not have to do this, but I like to do this because it just helps the playback a lot smoother. Um, so you can scroll easier on the timeline. So once you do that, you're going to go over to the Fusion tab. And what you're going to have is your media in, your media out. I'm not going to go into how this works. I'm still learning it myself. But all you need to know is that media out is what's going to show in your timeline once you're done. So I like to put one over here on this screen and then click media out. Press one on the keyboard. And you'll have another one over here. And I'll, and I'll show you why um, you're going to want that. So what you want to do is first zoom in, so you hold down control and go with your, your scroll wheel to get nice and close to that ball. And then on the left here, you'll have your, um, you know, you'll have yourself there, so you can just see what you're going to do. And what you want to do is scroll till you can get to where you make impact just before impact with the ball. So we're going to play it for a little bit. We'll pause it, and I'm pressing space to do this. So there we go. We went past it. So what you want to do is pick the frame. I'm using my arrow keys here. And, all right, that's where I'm making impact. So we're gonna stop right before that, one frame before that. And what I, something I found to do is write down what frame this is, because if you're doing a lot of these, and sometimes if you don't film it correctly and it gets cut out of uh, the screen for a little bit, you need to know what frame you started and stopped on. So I'll just remember 853 is the frame. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this little paintbrush thing and make sure you click media in, click the paintbrush, and it's gonna put it on this timeline. What it's essentially doing is taking media coming in, adding paint to it, and that's taking it out to the uh, edit page. So you're gonna click that, and you wanna get this option up here. It's polyline stroke. That's what you wanna use. Come right over here, and you're gonna click right below the ball. Okay, so now what that has done, we'll go click, um, make sure you click out somewhere, because if you don't do that, it's not going to scroll correctly. So click out, go to the next frame with the key, with the uh, keystroke, right to the right, click the ball again. What I like to do here is I just put opacity all the way down to zero, and that way I can see where the ball's going. So I'm going to speed this up, but I'll do a couple. 
click the arrow, find the ball, click it. Click out over here, do the arrow again, move your um, window here. And I, what I do is I click down on the middle. Um, I click down on the middle mouse button and then click the next one there. Click out, because if you don't click out, I'll show you the next one, what, what happens. So the ball, sometimes it's hard to find it. There it is. So sometimes with the tree, it's hard to see. Um, so if I don't click out, oh, let me do another one. So if I don't click out, it's like habit now. See how it's just moving it? You don't want that. It's moving the line. So make sure you always click out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trace this entire ball flight the whole way. So you'll notice as the ball gets further away, <laughs> obviously it gets harder to see. So that's why you really wanna make sure you zoom in best you can. And also when it's a clear sunny day like this, it helps a lot um, to see it. So when it's cloudy, I imagine it's probably a little bit harder. I haven't had a chance to try this with a cloudy day. But as you can see, I'm just gonna keep going through here and I will get back with you once I am finished. All right, and we're gonna get this. All right, there we go. We are done. Let's zoom back out. So there's our line. If we bring the op opacity back, you can kind of see that's what it looks like. However, we are not done because now we actually have to animate that line. So what, what will essentially happen? If we don't animate it, we'll go back to the beginning here. It's just gonna show this line the entire time. And that's not what, you know, obviously we wanna see. So what we need to do, let's go all the way back. Remember I said, remember the frame that we were at. So it was 8.53. And we're going to do this other thing um, here. So what we have to do is now we're going to zoom back in. We are going to bring this thing called stroke controls. That's what you want. And you want to change the right on. So we're going to bring this all the way back. And what that's going to do is make the line go away. And essentially what we're going to do is use keyframes to actually do this. Um, I, again, I'm not a really good at explaining all of this, but what you want to do is use a keyframe. So we're going to pick where the ball contact happens, which is right here. So obviously the one before that. So we'll pick that keyframe right there. Boom. We're going to scroll one frame forward, and we're going to chase, see where the ball moved a little bit. We're going to trace the line to that. And I actually like to change the... You can do, it's up to you, but I like to change the how the line looks now rather than later. Um, so I like to use red. You can use red, blue, whatever you want. So I just use this one. And then what I also do, and I found this a, kind of a trial and error, is I go to the second brush shape and change the size to 0 0.005. And that makes it so it's not this like big, huge line, because if, if you watch, for example, if you use one, like, oh. <laughs> It's probably too much. We use 0.0, I don't know, we'll do 0 0.05. It's kind of this huge line that's just like laughable. So I found 0 0.005 was good. And then the uh, the opacity, opacity uh, you want to put that down so it's not like this uh, 0.25 is what I put it at. So it's not like this, you know, thick, thick line, which I was doing in some of my earliest shot tracers. And I found that this is probably the best one, but you can do whatever you want. Um, so now same thing, we're going to, Go a frame forward. We're going to move the line up to that. And we're just going to keep literally just going through. And this is how the animation is actually going to happen. So we're going through here. Here we go. And we will catch up with you once I'm done. But that's essentially what you do. Chase the ball. Keep going there. I like to do it on the way up just below the ball so you can still kind of see it. And we'll keep going with that. Okay, so we have finished doing the animation and let's do it. Let's zoom out 
We're going to go all the way back. So all these little lines here is every time I moved the line to fill it in. So that's a, essentially a keyframe. Every single time the line is moving up slowly. So if we go all the way back and let's go to one screen so we can see the whole thing. Zoom out a bit. And we're going to press play. There it goes. So there's that line animating all the way down. There it is up there. And you'll be able to see it better in a second. So there you go. And something to note, you could, if you really wanted to, you could just do one keyframe here at the beginning and then you could do the last one all the way at the end. And I, if you go back and look at some of my other videos, I have tried to do that and that actually doesn't work good. Um, the reason being it doesn't am animate smoothly as if how the ball um, flies. So if you do that, it'll just pick the average, I think, from here all the way to the end. Whereas the way I'm doing it, it's filling in the line exactly with how the ball, how that actually, um, you know, how the ball actually flies. So we're all done here. And the nice thing is you just flip, flip right back over to the edit page and you come back at the beginning and let's just do a, let's show what it looks like for a second. I'm just going to mute the volume so the microphone doesn't pick it up. So let's just watch this. Look at that. That's probably actually probably my best one so far. And there you go. And that's it. That's how you do a free shot tracer in DaVinci Resolve. No need to pay for an app. Um, we'll see how long this takes me, but you know, as you keep doing them, you'll get better and better at it. For filming, you want to be directly behind the ball and more to the right um, if you're a righty and more to the left if you're a lefty. And the reason you want to do that is so you can track the ball flight, uh, you know, unless you shank it left, um, so you can track the ball flight more accurately and have it all in one shot. So if we go to this next, I don't know why my computer's doing this, but if you go to the next clip here that I did, so you'll see this one, I didn't have the camera set up correctly. Um, this is Hazel Rocket Golf. We, this is from our uh, Scramble Match, so shout out to his channel. Go check it out. But if you look at this, so see how the ball kind of gets cut off there, um, and then it comes back in on the frame over there. So I actually had to do two shot tracers to make this work. Um, so it was a lot more work and it's, it's a lot harder. So if you can make sure you have the camera far enough behind you, um, to get a good angle of, of the ball. And another thing is it helps when it's a sunny day like this, if it's a cloudy day, it's going to be a lot harder to do the shot tracer. So obviously you can't control the weather, but just something to keep in mind. And you also want to have a good camera. So all of this stuff was filmed on my iPhone 13 pro. Um, and honestly, that's a good enough camera for me at, at this point in time. But, um, you know, the better camera you have, the easier it is to find that ball, that ball, especially on drives. When you drive the ball, it, you know, if you're driving 250 or whatever, you know, that's, that's pretty far away for the camera, for your little iPhone camera to track. Um, and I do notice that as the ball gets further out there, it is harder to see. So there is a point where you do kind of have to guess. And I talked about this in the prior section, um, you do need to kind of guess where the uh, ball lands. But all right, everyone. So I hope that helps you guys to do the shot tracer correctly. Um, you know, this is just a quick video and definitely let me know what you guys think. If you want more stuff like this, um, if you have more questions, if I didn't explain something good enough, definitely let me know and I will reply to you. Or I'll make another video on it. So thanks again. Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.